Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Scott Schilling Speaks. Uh, Going to be an exciting show to hear today because of my guest, who is an absolute expert when it comes to the addiction to approval space. A uh, longtime friend, um, what he been on stage in over 30 countries. He's uh, taught people around the world and uh, honored to call him friend, Mr. Sean G. Murphy. Sean, welcome to the show. Hey, Scott, how are you? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you to all of your audience who watches this. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Awesome. And, so, yes, and yes, I am that over the top. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> is it because of addiction to approval, though? That's what we will examine here today. <laughs> and behind the scenes, 2020. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, Sean, I love I love the topic, and I love the fact that we're going to be able to serve some people today with this topic. Tell me about the foundation of addiction to approval, and then we'll, you know, just take it off a little bite at a time. How's that? I love it. And so let's let let's go back at the beginning. In the okay. beginning, there was no. When I say go back to the beginning, it's the beginning of everybody. And here's the challenge: this idea of addiction to approval is not that you are worried about what other people say. Follow me on this, because most people, when I've done my research and done my surveys, and uh, a buddy of mine has interviewed over 200,000 people in this matter, this is something that's real. And so when somebody says, are you addicted to, well, are you addicted to what they say? And we're like, not always. If I were to ask you a handful of questions, the, the, the research comes back and says 99.8% percent. What do you mean 0.8 percent? Yeah, the 0.2 percent. We just give that as a as a as a freebie for the schizophrenic. Literally, that's that mindset who doesn't really care. Let me go. Let me take you back to why this happens. If you've ever wanted to bring a flower to your mom or get a uh, buy your dad a shoehorn from the school uh, selection of things when you came out for Christmas, you wanted their approval. Now, this is wired in. You go to school and you want to get the teachers, you want to get the golden star, right? Because uh, they're going to have a conversation. I, I was always deathly afraid of parent-teacher conference. <laughs> not because I was a bad kid. I was just not the sharpest knife in the drawer. So all of this is wired in. And so we go to school and we go through rote and we go through repeating and we wind up having to get good grades based upon somebody else's thing. We've been graded and we've been graded that A's are better than B's. How many of you would agree with that? If A's are better than B's, you're addicted to having a better score. Listen, I was glad to have C's because <laughs> the D's, I, I was addicted to C's. All I'm saying is, is that then you go off and you get into work and now you've got to appease your boss. You've got to make sure that your manager is doing right. And everybody's got a manager, right? Even if it's the CEO, he's got board, uh, uh, shareholders. All of this has been wired into us. And the, where it really comes out is when the entrepreneur steps out on their own. That fear of addiction to what somebody else is going to say. We, you may call it rejection. See, if we just said, if Scott just said, yes, most people are, uh, don't want to experience rejection. That's called addiction to approval. So there's kind of a nutshell uh, roundabout answer to why this exists in everyone. Because I don't know anybody who really loves rejection. There's a few people out there, but the majority of us, it's something that makes our palms sweat or makes us, listen, if you've ever been afraid to stand up in front of an audience to speak, yeah, sure. those are the kinds of things. No, Well, it's really interesting to me that, and it's uh, interesting, the whole reject rejection uh, concept as well, but we are, no matter what we are, I, and I think we're, we're in a time where uh, maybe it's the, uh, the smart things or so-called so smart things that we hold in our hands sometimes, right? That, uh, oh, oh my God, how many people are watching? How many people are listening? What's going on? What can we serve? You know, uh, there are just so many different questions going on, right? So why how should we approach this today? How should we create the greatest information for the audience going forward? Well, if we go back to, if we go back to some of the basics, we go back to some of the, the foundational books. There's a good one. I think it starts with a B and ends with an eyeball. 
So there's this there's this foundational word in, in there. And listen, I'm not a theologian, nor can I recite chapter and verse, but I've heard some good verses somebody repeated out of it that I really, really like. And one of them is, I set before you life and death, and then it gives us the hack. Everybody wants the hack, right? right. Choose life. The other one is the, the life and death is in the power of the tongue. So it's all of these things we say to us. Epictetus said way back when, a couple thousand years ago, for those of you with desire, put it on the shelf till you realize what's within your circle of influence. Control that. What's outside, let that be. So when we hold up our phones and we look and we go, oh, we only have two people watching us live. And why doesn't anybody like, and at an unconscious level and at a subconscious level, listen, you've all heard that 70 to 80,000 thoughts a, a day, 60, 70, 80,000. You pick the number. It's a bunch. 80% of those are not in our favor. So this idea of addiction to approval carries over day after day after day. It's why inside of this community where you can literally reach out to somebody because somebody has decided to be a part of this community, that you can reach out to them with, without significant fear of rejection because we're here for a similar cause. We're here to do the same thing, to build our audience, to grow and add value to people. Because here's what I know, if you're listening to this, you add value to people. You wouldn't be here. You didn't, wouldn't get through this unless you know you can add value to people. The challenge is, is let's see if we can value up instead of always trying to value sideways or down. Well, it's it's intriguing that we, we have, I think, been conditioned, some of us more mature, uh, that's code word for older, oh. uh, some of us more mature folks. Um, it never used to, I think bother us as much, or maybe we just didn't have the uh, the scorekeeping mechanisms so so in front of our faces all the time that you just you kind of came through a if I can serve somebody, I did good kind of mentality, and now it's well if I don't have this, I really haven't accomplished anything. Is that all part of this? Well, I, I absolutely is 100%. The challenge is, is we're using a che we're using a a, a, a check base. We're using a, a a confirmation base that's not our own base. Got it. Right. If I look at what you do in the world, you've stood on stage in 2,500 different live events, sold over 25 million dollars. I haven't sold that much from the stage. So if I sit here and go, well, if I can't, I, I, Scott could do it. I couldn't do it. I I probably shouldn't even start. I'll never get to his level. I'll never do this. The challenge is, is that we're using a benchmark that may not be the benchmark that's best suited for us. And the thing that we, the only thing that we can measure is what we do for us. And this is where the addiction to approval comes in, where I'm not as good as him. So I, I, I don't even either A, I won't get started or B, no matter what I do, it'll never be good enough. Why now, does that comparison get started? Well, the comparison gets started because we, from a very young age, wanted to fit in. Got it. We wanted to fit in, right? How, how, many have, how many times have your parents, listen, I don't know, I grew up on a farm, and, but I still went to school. My parents would say, why aren't you as good as? And that's where the comparison starts. And a lot of times it was my brothers and my, my brothers were five and six years older than me. All right. So when I outgrew them, I used to kid around and go, why aren't they as tall as me? And my mom would say, that's not a good comparison. I go, then which one is? Right. Well, it's, so that's where it comes from. And so in many ways, aren't many people creating their own issues by looking at the wrong thing to begin with? Oh, Nir Ayal, who uh, wrote the book, if you've ever seen the yellow cover and it just says hooked, he talks about how many of you since the, since this watching this video started, your phone buzzed and you looked over at it. <laughs> Welcome to the age of technology. How many of you had a pop-up pop up on your screen and you either clicked away from this to hear, still hear the audio so you could go read an email? Right. These are the ways that we get conditioned. And what it's happening is that at, I'm also a, a certified brain trainer and a neuroencoding uh, life specialist, if you will. And neuroencoding is means I speak nervous system. Got it. And when you get triggered, 
right? How many of you, when you were growing up, you had, you, you got the mom call, right? Right. You were doing someplace else and they said your name and you knew the world was about to change. Usually it was the, your backside was going to get tanned. At least that's was mine and not in a good way. This can this 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 these triggers that happen. We all have these triggers and it's a vibrate on your phone and it's a this and it's a that and it's a, all of these different things. And they trigger certain chemicals in our body that cause us to feel a certain way. See, your addiction to approval is not in your mind. Your addiction to approval is stored in your body. It's stored in every cell in your body. That's why if somebody calls you that either you owe money or you forgot to do something or you you didn't follow up and it's your mentor calling you and you're like, oh, crap, I don't want to talk to him. That's in your body. The, the thought of it is not a big deal. Addiction to approval, rejection happens in our body. So how do we deal with that? We've got to change our nervous system. We've got to look at uh, Tony Robbins talks about the triad, folk um, physiology, focus, language, and meaning. What does our body feel right now? If you were more confident right now, what would you do to your, your physical structure? Most people, when I've done this in 30 different languages, not me speaking it, translated, you'll usually see them sit up a little bit. Yeah. That simple physiology can take away a lot of stress. So that's where this comparison comes from. That's what the triggers are, is, is what causes this addiction. It's the repetition, 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 repetition of even an old thought because the brain looks for two things. Will this kill me? Whatever it is you're about to do, or how fast can I recognize the pattern? And we all know we've, we've lumped different things in with something else just so the brain doesn't have to use all of the energy to create new neuro, neurogenesis is what's, what it's called. Well, it, it's interesting that you're in what you were saying earlier, the, I can think back to certain visceral responses in my body. Right. And I, and I think, um, I was trying to think through where those came from, you know, but many of them can be good. Many of them can be less than good. Right. Is what created that. And when you were talking about the, you know, whether it be 60,000 or 80,000 thoughts a day, why do we tend to hang on to the uh, less than good versions of those versus the good versions? Well, I remember the first time I heard this, this phrase that says it's because of the saber tooth tiger in the, in the room. I was being trained as a self-talk trainer and a self-talk specialist. Uh, Dr. Shad Helmstetter said, the reason we get stuck where we're at is because of the saber tooth tiger in the room. And I'm like, what the heck does that even mean? Yeah. And now because of the reticular activating system, once you see something, it's kind of like the, the arrow in FedEx, you can't unsee it. It's because of the, the 2 million year old brain that we have. And we are wired to make sure that that the snap of a twig, we, we are on high alert. It's something your brain does called nexting. See, if I were to avocado and have this, wait, what? I just broke a pattern. I broke one of your nextings. They say typically the brain is doing about five to seven different nextings, meaning you're wanting to fill in. That's why you can understand if somebody speaks a little bit faster and you can understand it. And, you know, and usually well, they're from New York or somewhere up north. Right. And or they speak a little bit slower and you're trying to fill in. Right. You get oh, fill it. Come on, speed it up. It's because your brain is nexting at multiple avenues. And it's looking for the pattern. Okay, so he's, it's kind of like autofill, autocorrect. Right. It's automatically going down this way. And your brain is constantly adjusting. That's why it's hard for us to remember somebody's name when we first meet them. Because our brain is nexting to what could possibly be the next conversation. So the reason that we look for that negative is because we're looking, we're in this constant state of fear of the saber-toothed tiger still wired into our brain of when, when will I be in trouble, right? What happens when we go to a restaurant and, and I don't wish it upon any server because I've owned restaurants, but when they drop the tray of glasses or plates, there's a jump, there's a little, you can feel it. It's palpable in the restaurant, that especially today with how sensitive we are to loud noises. Exactly. And then what typically happens? What's the release of that adrenaline? Right. We, we want to feel a little bit better. We want to feel a little bit safer about the situation. So we go from adrenaline rush to expanding some of that adrenaline. So we're in this constant state of what's what's going to hurt me, what's going to harm me. 
And especially when you get into conversations where you're wanting to sell and listen, everybody's in sales. Zig said it the best. Sales is a transference of enthusiasm. Right. And when we sell and we're afraid that we don't have the self-confidence, we don't have what Napoleon Hill called that burning desire to, to transmit our conversation, we wind up with a little doubt and therefore we're looking, we're, we're, we're a little bit more sensitive to, to a no or to a, something where that could go wrong versus it going right, right? It's that half full versus half empty kind of mentality. So that's why we're sensitive to that. It's just wired into us. It's a, it's a form of protection, right? I don't ever want to lose my fear of walking off the edge of a building. That probably wouldn't work so well. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be uh, the one that I'd like to keep out of all. Well, I think that that's the part that many people don't understand, that we're hardwired with, with actually three emotions. Most people think it's two, but flight or fight, you know, flight is, I'm out of here. You know, fight is, okay, put up your dukes. But the third one is actually freeze. We, we lock up and we sit in this position and we take no action. And when we take no action, there is no feedback. If we get no feedback, there is no ability to modify our position. We're frozen, right? So I find it really interesting when you talk about addiction to approval and that, that ultimately, to a certain extent, it's for our benefit. Uh, and yet, the more we know about it, probably the better off we would be. Would you agree? A absolutely. I mean, take a uh, take a sword. It, it can do. It can be for protection. It can be for aggression. It could be take the pen. The pen could be for recognition. It could be for aggression. It could. There's always the binary side of this. And here's the thing about the freeze part. Think about the last time you had a good idea. You were in dialogue with somebody and you went, and literally your body froze while it was running the synapses, while it was running 14,000 words a minute through your brain to, to, to try to connect this new thing because you had what Hill called the mastermind. When two minds arrive with each other, a third one is created, the mastermind. And they said something, you said something, and something totally new happened. Right. See, that's the same thing that we get when we get with anger or frustration with somebody, something, a new focus, a new language and meaning had to occur. There's been so many, so many new names brought to our dialogue today to, to, to that we, we have to create these new images. And, and the challenges is a lot of these new words that come out. There's a lot of confusion for somebody who's not part of that, who's not swimming in the middle of that particular ocean and prejudice runs rampant when you start to label things. And when we label fear as fear, as opposed to that freeze going, where's the good idea? Because Edison, Einstein said, in every problem is a solution. Right. Well, I think it, it, it's, it's interesting and we're living in a time where uh, uh, I did a talk not long ago and we were talking about uncertainty and how do you gain back certainty? And I said, I think a big part of that comes from balance in that if you're too far left or too far right, that you've got this entire chasm to swing. Yet if you're closer to the middle, you now have uh, the ability to see with maybe better discernment and, and better um, common sense. I don't know if that's necessarily so common anymore, but right? well, the, the, the common sense is to stay cool. The common sense is to stay in that center, to stay, you know, one of the things that I've learned over the last 18 months is, is the ones who are accelerating at a rapid pace, there is no certainty per se. It's their ability to deal with uncertainty, yet deal with the uncertainty without having to have significance. Significance and certainty, you will always be in pain. Having certainty that you will serve, having certainty, remember going back with what Epictetus said, stay inside your circle, stay inside your loop. Maybe your, your, your circle has gotten much bigger. It's when we venture outside of that, when we look for significance. You talk about all the time the the person who was an author, a new author, and they were uh, relating their book launch to... Uh, something gray, shades of gray, and you had a little conversation with them about what it is they were truly wanting to get out of life, what they were truly wanting to get from this launch. 
that the understanding that story and hearing that story will give you an insight to being able to deal with the uncertainty but have a but have a a, a certainty about what it is you want to accomplish yeah that that was working with a client who um, control uh, compared her book launch to 50 shades of gray That's and it. an endorsement on the back of the book and we were talking about are you are you after fame or are you after impact? And it becomes a, a different um, motivator, quite frankly, outside in kind of situation. I would say impact is more the inside out kind of uh, thing. And so again, I think that a big part of this becomes very intriguing as we understand that we get addicted to certain things now, let me ask, in fact, instead of me making a statement, let me ask the question. Is it possible that we become addicted to approval without our knowledge and or permission? Social media. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you see that somebody takes 45 minutes to get the perfect selfie, <laughs> and I've witnessed this, I never believed it to happen. I witnessed it. I was like, I felt like I was at a zoo watching this, this, this performance go on. And then they don't get a hundred likes. They don't get a thousand likes. They don't get 30,000 likes. All of a sudden they're, they seem so insignificant. One of the things you said, Scotty, as we were, as I was listening, where it was impact versus fame, fame is addiction to approval. Yeah. And if you're seeking fame, if you're wanting impact, there's no, there's no addiction to approval. It really isn't. If your desire is to totally be impactful, to be of service, because you to be impactful, you got to listen, right? To be significant, you got to be. You got to have people listening to you. Impact, you got to listen. You got to hear what it is that individual, that segment, that market space wants from you, and then deliver it in spades. The challenge is, is too many people go for impact because. It's really hard to compete today. So everybody's got to do it a little bit bigger, a little bit better, and got to have a better this and a better funnel and a better. Uh, listen, when, when you sit in this minimal addiction to approval and your, your desire is impact, Joseph McClendon III was doing something the other day, uh, entrepreneurial magnetism. Uh, definiteness of purpose, all of these different things you see from all of these people. Wallace D. Waddle says it's not about doing certain things. It's about doing things in a certain way. When you sit in that impact, that is the certain way. C recognition that the, the, the fame is just doing things and people yeah. are exhausted. They're exhausted. <clears throat> if you know somebody who's ever said this, they come home, they go to bed, I didn't get enough done. They wake up, I didn't get enough sleep. And I'm already behind the eight ball before I even start and it's 7.30 a.m. That, that's not impact. That's going after fame. That's, going, that's not following your wants, your wishes. I understand you got a job to do. You can do it and still not be exhausted. I think that that's what's actually tremendously exciting about launching this show, in essence, kind of relaunching this show in this platform, in the Be Connected platform, Live in the Hive, because what I'd like to do is create a model that quite frankly, anybody can do. That because everybody has value. And I think that there's an opportunity to create, um, I don't know, a, a cadence of value, a, a being able to come out here and whatever that value is. Later this week, one of my guests is a, a housefrau. She's a mom. And I think it's gonna be an absolutely, I know, let me correct that. I don't think it's gonna be an amazing show. I know it's gonna be an amazing show. But the reason is because she's got so much value in what she does and the way she goes about it. And I think that that's, the one thing that technology and a lot of these uh, things that, that are now available to us, we can get caught up in the uh, noise of it all 
and oh, I could be so famous if I got all these likes and I and so many people watched and all this stuff happened. Or you can say, you know what? I trust that the exact right person will see the exact right portion of this whenever it's just right for them. And it's a different approach to it all. But is that a different kind of addiction to approval still? No, if we can get people addicted to their, to their desire to serve versus am I, am, am I, am I competing in the service world? Got it. Can I, can I sit in my joy, right? I have a very dear friend. She does a gratitude call every day at 11 and she never thought of, she was going to do a call and she's in her 10th season, right? Every month is a season reads the same 28 days every day. <clears throat> and to watch what she has walked through to watch what some of the people have walked through in this getting back to center, right? We've got to get back home. We've got to take our, we got to take control of this, this device, this body, these, these 30 trillion cells that help us make a, have a feeling that we, we really want to have this feeling. One of the things that as I was listening to this amazing soul who's going to come on, who has the title, which is a bigger title than CEO, right? Taking care of ge a generational impactor, yeah. otherwise known as a mom and a dad. Having that influence and, and sitting there being, being able to speak to this moment, one of the th challenges is, <clears throat> is that they forget what they learned. I, I, I've coined this phrase, personal undevelopment. We've yeah. got to let go of some of the things that aren't serving us. And we keep piling it on and we go to another event. We go to a, listen, I, I don't know about you, but I can't swing a cat without hitting a five-day challenge somewhere on the internet, like yeah. right now. Yeah. And they're good stuff. Good stuff. Bob Proctor was five days, Science of Getting Rich. They had 800,000 people register for Own Your Life Challenge. Are you kidding me? 800,000 people raised their hand and said, I want more. Yeah. The question is, is they can't take the next step because they forgot what you just shared. The addiction to approval that I could be more, become better. If I listen to Scott and I, and I, and I implement this, I join this community called Be Connected and I'm part of the hive. It's like, wait a minute, they're, they're all better than me. No, they just were here first. They're not better. Right. You get to leverage their success. You get, there's some, I, 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 everybody I've looked at that's reached out to me, they're like world-class superstars. They are the best of the best in their niche. And they're looking, and here's the funny thing, they were looking for me to add value to what it is they do. That's significant. That's just like, it's overwhelming. Sometimes we get put in a place that it's like too good. We're waiting for the other shoe to drop. Well, here's the other shoe that needs to drop. It's yours, plant it squarely in front of you and take the next step. Yeah, I think that that's so, um, I, I literally had one of these conversations this morning with a, with a longtime friend. She's a bootstrapper extraordinaire. She has, um, she's got one desire and that's to help and serve other people. And she hasn't had the resources or hasn't had the, the system that has allowed her to fulfill her dreams, wants, and desires. And we started talking and I said, I just want to show you an idea that may allow you to do a little bit more. And man, she got excited. Just the fact that, that somebody would invest. And it's really interesting because I think, and you and I, Sean, have been phenomenally blessed to share the stage with the best of the best you know uh we've been able to to rub shoulders and sit in the green room and do all those different things with just some amazing people and yet not everybody has had that opportunity yet and the reality is that many times their knowledge their desire their frame of reference is from a such a different place that they actually given the vehicle 
could impact as many or more people than you and I. And I think that's the exciting part of, of what's happening today. And what I want to do with Scott Schilling Speaks, it's not really about me speaking. It's really about giving you permission and lifting you up to speak. And that's why I want to have you here as the expert on addiction to approval to help everybody else so that you can share your wisdom with them. So as we kind of wind down a little bit, what would you say to people that, that would help them give them the permission to live their own genius? Well, you mentioned the key word genius. Genius is when you tap into you and it flows through you. Anything short of that is smarts. And I, I'll be the first one to tell you, I may, I've done a study in this field that I'm in, which is why I can sound intelligent about the topics. I've focused on it. I've studied it. I am not what is by school standards, the smart kid in the room. What, and the reason I share that with you is because as a farm boy from Ohio with a 0.9 grade point average, my first semester in high school, I'm not going to say the cliche, if I could do it, you could do it. No, you can't do what I do. But here's the thing I know, only you can do what you do. Yeah. And we need to be a witness to watch you grow. You, we, we need to be more, there needs to be more witnesses to show people, to shine the light on people, to say, here's somebody doing well. So when you get invited to speak on a platform like this, know that the speaker who had enough gumption to set up, yeah, I use the word gumption, had enough gumption to set up the interview is not doing it to make you look small. They're doing it to make you look bigger. They're, listen, I, I, I get to interview a whole bunch of people like Scott and I get to say, I was with them. I get to, just because of my association with you, get to share in your space and time. Listen, Emerson said this, there's something you do so well, people wish they could do it half as well. That just proves your genius exists. Because if I, we talked about what it is you do so well, you go, yeah, but it's no big deal. To you, it's not. And here's what's no big deal. Reaching out, connecting with people inside of here, sending that request. I promise you, what you will find is a wealth beyond any Facebook page, beyond any Instagram page, because in here there's a certain amount of connection that already is assumed. And I don't have to go impress you. I'm already here. You're already here. It's a community. And the second you step into that and realize, I got the chills. I don't know about you, Scott. <laughs> I just got the chills saying that this is truly a community of like-minded individuals who want the the in the to impress the idea of increase. So that'd be my suggestion. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it just um, it just very wise words, and um, I so appreciate our friendship, um, everything you've added to my life, um, the people that we we have gotten to know together, uh, and and all these. Uh, Unfortunately, you know, we could sit here all, not unfortunately, we could sit here all day. Uh, unfortunately, what I was going to say is- One of us might have to go get an adult beverage with some of the stories of, <laughs> of the many, people we know. Or for many of the stories. But, uh, you know, uh, just want to, uh, the unfortunate part is, is trying to control a time frame. But right. to say, you know, we certainly have to have you back again and talk about so many of the more things that, you know, so many of the things that we talk about uh, on how to help others achieve their genius, their greatness and, and everything. I so appreciate you. How do people get a hold of you to learn more from you? Uh, they can go to uh, seangmurphy.com. And that's the website. And there's a couple of emails that they can sign up for if they choose. One's 52 scars, the scars we all carry that we sometimes... Uh, Paulo Coelho in his book, Manuscript Found in a Craw, which is where I picked this up from, said the scars you carry are stronger than the sword that made them. So that's one place. And um, if you want to learn more about what I do every morning, today was episode 853. 
Woo. You can go to personalundevelopment.com and learn more there. Awesome. Sean Murphy, sorry, Sean G. Murphy, <laughs> thank you for joining me on this edition of uh, Scott Schilling Speaks. Look forward to having you back again soon. And uh, thank you, my friend. We need to get Love together soon. Have a thank fabulous you, day. See you all. Bye for now.